welcome to our home. Today I'm going to talk to you about lesson five, which is called Piggy Bank Principle. How many of you have ever had a problem saving money? You know, it's hard to have that discipline to take that money off the top every single month and put it into a savings account. Matter of fact, how many of you probably have what my husband likes to call the disease called DMD disease, the disappearing money disease? It seems like every time we had money, it would poof disappear. And he liked to call that the disappearing money disease. In reality, if you think about it, I know people that have worked their whole life that have never been able to save enough money to retire on. And let's face it, there's going to be a point in time in all of our lives that we either don't want to do what we're doing or we physically won't be able to do what we're doing. And we're going to need money coming in, money that's been put away somewhere or money that's coming from somewhere that's going to fund that lifestyle. And so um, it is difficult to save money. We all seem to struggle with that, uh, having the discipline to do that or take that money off the top. So what if we had a way that you could have someone else do that savings for you? I'll give you an example of uh, one of the ways that we did that. We decided early on to invest in real estate. It's one of the things we love about in real, investing in real estate is the fact uh, that while we have tenants in our properties, they're actually depositing money every single month into our what we call our piggy bank. And so there is a way to have a savings account where you're not the one that's having to have the discipline to do it. Uh, one of our very first properties that we bought very early on was at 902 Hickory. We paid $15,000 for the property. We put $60,000 in. And that pop property, now free and clear today, brings in about $2,200 a month. And so that was a way for us to have a forced savings back in 1993 that would, would bring us an income today of $2,200 a, a month. And cute story. My husband got in the mail the other day a notice that said, if you take your social security by the age of 62, we'll pay you $1,300 a month. And so that was kind of the government's way, I guess, of saving for us all those years. And so that's a perfect example of even them taking money out of the money he made all these years, it was still only going to be $1,300 a month. And yet us buying one property back in 1993, is, gonna, is throwing us off $2,200 a month. So there are ways for you to have what we call a forced savings or someone else to be depositing money into your piggy bank every single month. And again, that's one of the reasons we love real estate investing is because that's what happens. Every single month when a tenant makes a, a, a payment on the property, several things happen. First thing happen is it reduces your debt on that property. So every month that there's a debt reduction, that's like that tenant making a deposit into your piggy bank because that debt reduction gets lower and lower and lower. And then another way that that tenant will actually put money into your piggy bank is when those properties cash flow. So every property that we have will cash flow some dollar amount. So that extra money after we pay the the, the mortgage on the property and after we pay the expenses, that extra money is called cash flow. And again, that's another way that that tenant drops money or deposits money into our piggy bank. And then if you get the great pleasure of appreciation, uh, again, using 902 Hickory as, as the example, we bought it for 15, put 60,000 in it in 1993. And because of appreciation, that property today is worth uh, a little over $200,000. And so the spread between those two is called appreciation. And again, that tenant paid for it. Uh, that tenant reduced the, the property um, debt amount, uh, and then the market went up. So that was another way that money got deposited into our savings account or our piggy bank every single month, not us having to have the discipline to do it, not us having to remember to do it or have the extra money to do it, but them doing it every single month by paying that rent payment that they paid to us. So that's a great way to kind of explain to you how the piggy bank principle works. Uh, it's tenants making your rent payments, and from those rent payments, you're, you're reducing your debt on your properties. You've got some cash flow left over, and then when appreciation comes in, it's icing uh, on the cake. And so um, it's a forced savings plan.
So it's a forced way for you to have something in the future. So you could have one property and do that. You could have 10 properties and do that. You have to decide how much savings do you want in the future for you to live off of and for you to fund your lifestyle. And then all you have to do is work it backwards and decide how many of those properties do you need to buy? How many of those tenants do you want making deposits into your bank account every single month to giving you that forced savings uh, or that dollar amount into your piggy bank. So I hope you've enjoyed lesson five, the piggy bank principle. If you like this video, we'd like for you to make a comment below and share it with someone if you would. And we'd love to hear your feedback. So please go below and make a comment. Look forward to hearing from you.